What's up, everyone? Welcome to this day in Philly Sports History for October 14th, 2024. I'm your host, Jim Montgomery. Welcome to a Victory Monday edition of the podcast. A Victory Monday, but a very, very ugly Victory Monday. And just kind of will be more as usual. Like, we'll break it down more tomorrow as we go throughout the week, but... Not sure how to feel about that game. I, I honestly, the the initial reaction is left the game yesterday. Never more pissed off about a win. I think in my life, and I know Andy Reid used to always say, anytime you get a win in the National Football League, it's a good thing. And yes, that is a good thing. But man, I do not feel confident coming out of that game I think you won that game in, in due to Cleveland being so bad uh, the defense played well as well they should have and didn't score a or give up a offensive touchdown they got the fluky blocked field goal touchdown uh, they had put the pressure on Deshaun Watson got a few sacks they like I said they come in bunches not sure what's going on with the offense. And it was almost like a tale of two things there because they're still getting off to the slow starts. And I don't understand that. I don't know if it is execution. I don't know if it is the scripted plays that just aren't working. Uh, maybe because they're scripted, Jalen's not audibly out of the... I, I don't know. Like, there's just something wrong. with This team cannot score in the first quarter. And they kind of get into the groove. And I don't know if they need to pound it to Saquon Barkley more, who was kind of lost and uh, had the one mistake on the play when he ran out of bounds. But I, I just don't know. And I, I think Jalen played better. He did not turn the ball over, which is a huge positive. I think there you saw some life in them, so there are some positive things to take away. Like I said, the defense dominated the way they should have against that team. But I, I just don't know where this team goes from here. And I, I fully expected them to blow out this team, and maybe that's why I'm more disappointed is because they didn't. They should have, and uh, I don't know. I mean, the positives to take away, no turnovers for Jalen. Defense played well. A.J. Brown being back is huge for that team. I, I do want to mention, despite that Jalen did not turn the ball over, there were a handful of times where he's still missing and not taking the chance to take shots. A.J. was open a couple of times and he missed him. And even on the one pass where he hit A.J. on the cross, AJ broke that play off. He was going deep on a uh, post, and he had him. AJ did that, and I don't know if it's because he doesn't have confidence in his arm strength or what, but it's hard to be mad at Jalen after that because he didn't turn the ball over. He did play well, he showed some emotion, uh, doing the nice little dance with the kid and play dance with AJ, uh, chest bumping with Brandon Graham. So hard to be mad at him. It's just they're they're stuck in neutral. Uh, I think Lane Johnson said it. he was like they're a constipated offense, which is which is the truth. I, I feel like they're close to exploding, but for some reason, and again, I don't know if it's scripted plays. I don't know if it's the execution or what. Uh, but we'll see. Uh, Jordan Mailata injured his hamstring, so not sure to the extent of him. He was on crutches after the game. We'll have to keep an eye on that. That's not a good good sign there. Uh, I don't know what Nick Sirianni's doing. Uh, yelling at the crowd. I, I give up trying to figure that dude out. And, I, and maybe it's him. I, I really, at this point, I, I can't figure out what's wrong with this team. Maybe it's him. Who knows, but we'll probably have more on him as the week goes. But let's go back and take a look at yesterday's three keys to the game. I said a fast start. No fast start for the Eagles yesterday. I was just, I don't know. They can't get out of the gates. And if they had the opportunity to be up 14, 20, 14 or 21 nothing in that first quarter, and that would have been 
made things feel much better. But instead, we had to sweat it out. You give up a fluky blocked field goal right before halftime. It's like dumb stuff like that to turn the game around. And it, it's ugh. AJ being back. AJ had a monster game. Six catches, 116 yards, and a touchdown. I will say he could have had another one. He was wide open. And I don't know if Jalen didn't see him, couldn't get him the ball, but he was there. Um, and then the defense, defense had five sacks. They put constant pressure on the Browns and Deshaun Watson, but the slow start killed them. And again, it, I, I think if this was a game against the Steelers or even the Bengals, I'd be like, okay, 20 to 16, I'll take it. But because it was the Browns, I expect it to be a bigger blowout. Maybe that's why I'm disappointed. Maybe I'm just down. Uh, maybe it's the PTSD from the Phillies. Who knows? But I don't know. But it's time to name our GOAT of the game. 267-495-8531. Who was the GOAT of the Eagles game yesterday? Was it A.J. Brown? Six catches, 116 yards, and a touchdown. Jalen Carter with a sack and tons of pressure on Deshaun Watson and the Browns' defensive or offensive line. Or Jalen Hurts with 264 yards, two touchdowns, but more importantly, no turnovers. Let me know who your GOAT of the game is. 267-495-8531. That's the Back to the Future voice and text line. Get that. Anything else sport, Philly sports related off your chest? Want to vent about Nick Sirianni? Want to talk about the game? Were you at the game? Uh, all of that is fair. It was a beautiful day, by the way, for a game. It, it, I mean, that. it was hard to leave disappointed when it was that beautiful out, but I'm still disappointed. I don't know. I'll take it, though. A win is a win, and even ugly wins count, too. All right, but be sure to let me know your your go to the game. Is it AJ, Jalen, Carter, or Jalen Hurts? 267-495-8531. That'll get you into the Back to the Future voice and text line. Uh, we did lose our bet, too. We're 2-3. and three. They did not even come close to covering the 8.5. Uh, certainly not the nine and a half or the ten and a half. So got a little overzealous yesterday with the bet. Uh, and obviously the over did not come in as they only got to 36. Not a good day. Not a good day at all. <clears throat> all right. Be sure to follow me on social media, Jimbo underscore Mont Twitter and TikTok at Philly Jimbo on Instagram. Hit me up on the YouTube channel, Jimbo underscore Mont. Subscribe, spread the word, tell your friends, tell everyone. If you're enjoying this, somebody else will. Uh, if you need any information on the Philadelphia Sports Hall of Fame, all of that information is in the link in the description. Um, induction ceremony coming up November 7th. Looking forward to that. Uh, but great class. Looking like, just go check it out. Between Chase, Ryan, and Jameer Nelson, I mean, that's big enough. And then Angelo Cataldi's in, Paul Westhead, a lot. It should be a good time. So go check all of that information out in the link. And then go to Philly Goat. Get your Eagles gear, Sixers gear, Flyers gear. They have you covered. They have those canvas loafers. Uh, they have some Flyers and Sixers ones as well. Even some Eagles, they have the Reggies. So go check them out. Uh, and use that promo code Jim Montgomery to take 10% off your order. That's phillygoat.com. Promo code Jim Montgomery to take 10% off of your order. And then check out my boys at the Clashing Conferences. Should be an interesting week as the Eagles are the only NFC East team to win this week, believe it or not. Um, and you would have thought the way I'm feeling, they lost too. But New episodes drop on Wednesday, I think Thursday for football and Friday for baseball. Uh, shame the Mets got blown out last night. You hate to see it. Uh, but go check them out wherever you get your podcast as well as on YouTube. Flyers in action. Or they're off tonight. They'll be in Edmonton tomorrow. Sixers preseason game in Atlanta tonight. There will be no Joel Embiid. He was ruled out for the rest of the preseason. Uh, they basically said it's uh, knee injury management. Um, essentially, they're like, why are we going to put you in a preseason game? Which at first, like the way I read that, I was like, oh man, here we go again. But he only played in one preseason game last year anyway. Um, so I don't think this is as big of a deal as it 
as it sounds. And plus, they're going to have to get used to playing without him on his rest days anyway. Uh, but they only have three preseason games left. Season kicks off soon. Cannot wait. Let's go. All right, today we're going to go back to 1979. And on this day, 1979, the Phil, or the Flyers beat the Toronto Maple Leafs 4-3. to Paul Holmgren, Bob Kelly, Reggie Leach, and Brian Pop all had prop. All had goals as the Flyers improved to two and one. Little did anyone know, though, that this this win was the start of something historic. They had lost the night before to Atlanta, nine to two, and it was sort of like their first loss of the season. Got blown out. It wasn't no was no big deal. No harm, no foul. But with this win, they would not lose again until January seventh. 35 consecutive games without a loss, 25-0-10 during that streak. It is the North American record for un, or for unbeaten streaks uh, with 35. They won the division. They were so good with 14 games left. Made it all the way to the Stanley Cup before battling out to the New York Islanders. But on this day in 1979, the Flyers' historic 35-game unbeaten streak began with a 4-3 win over the Maple Leafs. Uh, what's even more impressive is during that streak, the fact that 10 of those games, only 10 of those games were ties. They won 25 out of the 35, which is, is pretty impressive. But that is the North American record for consecutive wins without, or consecutive games without a loss. I should say, not wins, without a loss. 35 and that started on this day in 1979. It would go all the way till January 7th, 1980. All right. Finally today, our Red October Great Games in Philly's postseason history. Game 5 of the 93 World Series. And as this game was so important, so needed. They were coming off that 15-14 wild one that had a rain delay. Phillies had a lead. Uh, gave up the lead. Uh, and they needed a win to stay alive, and they relied on their, their ace, Kurt Schilling, uh, who was taking on Juan Guzman, who was no slouch himself. Lenny Dykstra led off with a walk, stole second, reached third on an error, and then scored on a J John Cruck ground out in the first. And then in the second inning, Darren Dalton doubled, got to third on a ground out, and scored on a Kevin Stocker single. And that's all Kurt Schilling needed. Uh, he threw a complete game shutout, giving up five hits, striking out six, only walking three. Uh, and it was just what the doctor ordered for the Phillies that year. And obviously they went back to Toronto, and we know how that played out. But on this day, though, it was – or not on this day, but for game five anyway, that was just – we were – we were excited because we're like, all right, Kurt Schilling did what he needed to do. And we, I did anyway, we felt good going into Toronto to try to win that game uh, until Joe Carter, who ruined all of our childhoods, as the shirt at Philly Goat says. But game five of the 1993 World Series is our Phillies Red October postseason, or great game in Phillies postseason history. Phillies beat the, the Blue Jays 2-0. Kurt Schilling was just dominant, gave them exactly what they needed. And this was sort of like the birth of the legend of Kurt Schilling in the World Series. If you remember the bloody sock and all the other craziness with him, uh, this kind of started that whole process for old, old Kurt. Uh, but that was today's great game in Phillies postseason history. On this day in 1979, Flyers beat the Maple Leafs four to three. It was the first game of their thirty-five ungame or thirty-five game un. I don't know why I'm having so much trouble saying that today. Thirty-five game unbeaten streak. Uh, it was game one. We go all the way into January, but that is a North American record. Uh, and little did you know that night that you were witnessing the beginning of history. We'll have more updates on the Sixers tomorrow. Uh, Flyers getting ready to play Edmonton. But let me know who your GOAT of the Eagles game was yesterday. A.J. Brown, Jalen Carter, Jalen Hurts, 267-495-8531. That'll get you into the Back to the Future voice and text line. Let me know. Give me your thoughts on the game. A am I being too, too negative? Should I be excited that they won the game? 
They didn't turn the ball over. Uh, I don't know. Let me know. I could be convinced. Convince me otherwise if I if I should be be feeling better about this. Uh, but that's all on the Back to the Future voice and text line. Text me. Call me. Whatever you need to do. And we'll have more on this game tomorrow. Hopefully we have some positive updates on Jordan Maialata. Uh, as we get the day after and start breaking down and getting ready for the next game, which I think the next game is the Giants. Um, but actually, you know what? Let me look that up real quick because that's going to bother me. I'm pretty sure it is the Giants is the next game. Yep. Next Sunday up in the Meadowlands. So could be a tough game. We'll see. Uh, but let me know your thoughts on the Eagles game. And uh, I, I just I, I apologize. I'm just so down about that game. Like I can't get, I cannot get behind that right now. This has been this day in Philly sports history for October 14th, 2024. My name is Jim Montgomery. Go have yourselves a Monday. It is a victory Monday, so enjoy. And until next time, I'll see you when I see you. <laughs>